When you think about audio interfaces, what comes to mind? Probably something like this. Nice, compact, simple. Or maybe a step up. Something with more inputs, more outputs, optical, spit-off and MIDI, rack-mountable, but small enough to still live on your desk. Then we have this. Hey, beautiful people. Old Man Ven back for another Interfacing Linux, and this is the DigiDesign 003R, take two, because it works now. Stick with me. Back in 2007, they released a couple of versions of these, a console, rack, and that's what we have, the 003R. The thing was originally 1,100 pounds, but you can pick them up wicked cheap today. So let's take a look on the front panel. You do have four preamps with mic and DI switches up front, along with high pass filter, two phones, monitor, two headphone outs, and up front you got options for your aux in, aux out, mono switches, and of course mutes. I'm quite possibly one of the chunkiest power switches I've ever encountered. On the back we have quite a lot to play with, uh, starting with the four XLR balanced, and channels five through eight are quarter inch, but they are switchable between minus ten and plus four. That's a nice feature. A foot switch, yay, but yeah, four XLR, four direct input, your outputs, one through eight, firewire and firewire pass through. That's good to see. Optical in and out for your eight at and spit of plus word clocks. Main out, alt out, aux in. Not one, not two, but three. MIDI ports along with a standard power connector. Back in 2019, I was looking for cheap Firewire interfaces and I ran across the 003R and they're still cheap to this day, but more importantly, I came across the site at Zam Audio that said, hey, the Linux driver is up and running, so I bought one, plugged it in, and well, as you see here, it didn't work. Not even a little bit, but fortunately, TAC was working on the Ulsa Firewire stack, so I messaged him back in 2020. Lo and behold, May of this year, TAC was able to implement the clock recovery to prevent the clicks and pops. So let's try it out. Let's talk about the driver situation and those come in the form of Soundfire Wire Improve. It's part of the ALSA stack. If you have a newer kernel like 515, hello future people, you're probably going to be good, but let's walk through the steps anyway. You need to set up your build system. I'm gonna be doing this on Debian, so make sure you have your Linux headers and build essentials packages installed then we're going to clone the git repo that's going to take just a moment let's pop into our new soundfire wire improved directory we're going to link with a little bit of symbolicism that's not a word let's pretend it is then we're going to install the dkms this is going to take a second depending on the speed of your system but once that's complete let's give the system a reboot we should be good Up next, we need to talk about Soundfire Wire Control Services. If you want to make use of Alsa Mixer, this is what you're going to have to do. It requires a lot of updated libraries, but once you get it set up, you can head over to Alsa Mixer. I'm just going to go down to the 003 rack and look at that. This is effectively everything that you would normally find inside of Fado Mixer, but there it is right there in Alsa. Now that everything's set up, let's head over to Pavu Control and we can see it looks just like a sound card. It does. You got your inputs, you got your outputs. No surprises here. That is good to see, but since we're probably all here for Jack, let's take a look. I'm going to be using Cadence. Device setup, 48K, 128. Make sure that your period buffer size is on 3. That's what this device likes. Let's tap that start button and see what we get. Let's head over to tools. We can open up Katia 18 in and 18 out. And that's with the Pulse Audio module jack loaded in. Kinda neat. This is the 003R running a recording template that we use in the studio. We're recording six tracks at 48K with a 128 buffer looking for X runs and after 10 minutes, they're none to report. Let's take a look at the round trip latency, starting with 44.1 all the way up to 192. 
Everything here is about what I would expect from a Firewire interface, no big surprises, and 9.3 milliseconds at 128 at 96k, that's going to be more than acceptable for live monitoring. Starting off first with the ElectroVoice RE27ND, plugged directly into the DigiDesign 003R. Everything's coming through smooth, as you can see over here. As with the rest of the microphones, we will be using the typical vocal stack that I use for recording Linux Schemecast Weekly and Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays. Coming up next, we have nothing but the best, the finest that Amazon can offer. This is, in fact, the Amazon Basics Dynamic Microphone coming in through the DigiDesign 003R. Coming up next, we have a microphone a lot of people don't know about. It's from a company a lot of people don't know about either. I've used it for the show, used it for hundreds of shows. It's a fantastic microphone. This is the D2 from the Golden Age Project, plugged directly in to the DigiDesign 003R. And last, but definitely not least, it's the classic Shure S. I'm kidding. This is the uh, OSP DL330. Fantastic little dynamic mic. Uh, I don't think they're made anymore, but it's plugged directly into the DigiDesign 003R. This is the end. The end. Hey, okay. Final thoughts, right? Let's do this. Uh, pros and cons. Let's just start right out with the cons. The big negative, horrible, nasty things about the DigiDesign 003R. Because there's really not much to say. It's a big case. It's a 2U case. That that's a, that's just a con. It's a big chungus. You know, if you have a rack, you can put it in. It's not something you're going to put on your desk unless you're going to put a monitor on top of it and like make pretend that you're doing desktop computing in the 90s. If that's your thing, go for it. The other thing that's kind of a con, there's only four preamps. There are versions with eight. They're like really rare. And they're also like pretty expensive. Unlike the DigiDesign 003R with just four preamps. But more on that at 11. Another kind of con is getting the also mixer stuff set up with Sunfire wire control can be a bit of a hassle getting everything up to date. But once you get it sorted, it's not bad at all. Let's talk about the pros though. This thing, this little beast, not little, this massive beast from 2007, it still sounds great. I still, still with everything in my rack, I would put this behind maybe uh, just a little bit behind some of my Apache gear. That's where it sits even today. And like, I have Moto MK3s, I have RMEs, this thing still sounds the business, 100%. Also, it's cheap. I'll tell you how cheap in just a moment. On top of that, you get the hardware MIDI. Love to see it. And four switchable line inputs, you know, plus 10, minus four individual. Hardware, like to see that. But what should you pay for the DigiDesign 003R in 2021? Hmm, well, about 100 bucks. About a hundred bucks, and that's for one that's in good shape. Also, you really need to keep in mind, after you're searching around on eBay, searching around on Reverb, these are not retro gaming consoles. The, the front plastic does not yellow with age. If you see one of those, it's going to smell like an ashtray. Free pro tip from your friendly neighborhood old man, Vin. But that's going to do it for this one. There will be a link in the description with some additional notes. Thanks to all the patrons who support everything we do at Linux Gamecast. Without you, this absolutely would not be possible. Thank you so much. But leave any questions you have in the comments and uh, yeah, just get out there. Make something awesome.